this is Mark Hoskey for Control Engineering. We're now in close proximity to the Design and Manufacturing Midwest Show, running from September 22nd to the 24th in Rosemont, Illinois, near Chicago. The plan is to provide a brief tutorial video on discrete sensors by looking at some recently introduced sensors for manufacturing. Co-located shows here this week include the Assembly Technology Expo, Electronics Midwest, Quality Expo, Green Manufacturing Expo, Medical Design and Manufacturing Midwest. We're going to skip registration though because you're with me and I've pre-registered. Hi, we're here at the Carlo Gavazzi uh, booth talking about uh, various kinds of proximity and photoelectric sensors. I'm with John Bach, he's the Vice President of Marketing, and he's going to start with the capacitive and proximity sensors. John? Yeah, Carlo Gavazzi is a, a worldwide leader in capacitive sensing technology. We've got all different types of housings, uh, anywhere from 12 millimeter up to 30 millimeter, uh, very compact flat pack sensors, which are good for mounting up against the, the face of something and detecting if something of mass is on the other side. And uh, one of the things that we've come out with in recent years uh, is a self-tuning, a self-teaching feature in which there's no potentiometers to adjust. You simply push a button, you detect your material, you release the button, then you know your sensing distance is set. It has humidity compensation, waterproof you know, housings and so forth and so on. So well, else, overall yeah. setup is a lot easier than it used to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be a lot quicker. Sometimes, you know, it's a little bit more challenging. Some people prefer doing things the old-fashioned way with the potentiometers. So they may try the self-tuning, but, you know, whatever works best for their application, we have the self-tuning type, and we also have the potentiometer type. Great. So a capacitive sensor uses what technology inside? There's a, it's a capacitive face on the front of the sensor, and then as a material of mass comes in front of it, that then changes the dielectric constant of the face of the sensor, and then you get an output. Great. And uh, the different form factors and sizes depend on the application and range required? Yeah, usually the smaller the face of the sensor, the shorter the sensing range. But obviously, you know, if you have a smaller sensor, you're not going to expect that longer range. But we, you know, like I said, we have a 12 millimeter, an 18 millimeter, and also a 30 millimeter. If you need a longer range, we also have some flat pack housings and one that's a uh, pancake. It's the size of a pancake, like 80 millimeters in diameter. We got the metal house sensors as well as the plastic type with the quick disconnect or with the cable. We have it with a, uh, a ring LED indication or with just an LED on the side like that. And then uh, they come in diameters from uh, 12 millimeter to 18 millimeter to 30 millimeter. And then uh, they also come in a flat pack. This one shaped like a, like a matchbook box. This one's our newer design, which has a self-teach feature dual LED indication. You can actually put a strap around it and there's some stays right here so the thing won't slip up or down. And then in addition to that we also have these self-teach features where instead of a potentiometer on the back or on the side you actually push the button on the side, sense your material, and then release the button and then you're good to go. And typical applications for this kind of thing? Uh, typically uh, on or off you know indication that you're at a certain level versus an analog output that you typically get from an ultrasonic sensor. So if somebody just wants to know, if, you know, for instance, a plastics machinery, the plastic hopper, they need to know if it gets low so they can put more plastic pellets, regrind into it. It's that type of application. Grain applications. Um, if you have a, a bin filled with uh, wood chips or sawdust or something along those lines, it could detect materials as light as that. So I've also seen capacitive sensors used in some discrete manufacturing. Yeah, they can be used, I mean, typically level control, but you know, if we've uh, one of the most interesting applications we have is for automated wheelchairs, where the person might be a quadriplegic, they can't use their hands, so they put a series of these sensors, these flat pack sensors, in the headrest of the wheelchair. So if they lean their head to the right, it'll start steering the wheelchair to the right. And then they lean their head back, and then it will start to go. They lean their head forward, and it'll stop. So all different kinds of interesting applications. Great. Probably fun to hear about what people come up with. Yeah. So we're here at the, the Turk booth. I have with me John Murphy, who is a sensor product manager, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the Uprox sensor line. Hi. Hi, Mark. How's it going today? Thanks for stopping by and taking time out to chat. Um, basically what we've got here, what we're going to talk about for a few minutes, is our Uprox line and some of the advantages that it has over a standard ferrite core technology proximity sensor. Um, one of the neat things is it has, comes in many different form factors, so 
mounting applications are very universal. And one of the nice things with the Uprox compared to our standard ferrite core is it has what we would call um, all sensing range or same sensing range where whatever material you're going to use, be it copper, stainless, what have you like this, it's always going to sense it at the same distance. So if you come in and you've got a sensor that's, uh, say it's a 30 millimeter sensing distance, it's always going to sense at the 30 millimeter sensing distance, no matter what the material is. Now if we get into the ferrite core technology, it's a little different. We have what we call correction factors. Um, that really needs a ferrous material, and if you have like regular cold steel, something like that, you're going to get your standard sensing distance. Now, if you're changing materials up and you're going to go to copper, or aluminum, things like this, we have what we call correction factors. So your sensing distance is going to be cut down. And the advantage for a particular application or plant? Um, nice thing for um, if you run into a plant and they got different applications and maybe they're dealing with different metals and things like this, the Uprox, you can have one sensor do it all and you know what your sensing distance is going to be. Where if you had used a ferrite core, you're going to have to, it's a lot different more setup for the application because you're going to have to adjust for your sensing distance to allow for that correction factor. Uh, another plus with the Uprox technology, that is well filled immune, so it's very good for noisy environments. Um, Say you had this and there was like a servo motors or something like that mounted nearby, um, it won't interfere with the sensor. Uh, ferrite core, you can run into situations where that might cause you a problem. Now the Uprox is using uh, two inductive uh, coils inside, is that how it works? It, it's got actually the Uprox and Uprox Plus. The Uprox itself has a three coil, Uprox Plus has a four coil design. Um, flexible circuitry, PCB board type based um, technology, uh, which is obviously different from the ferrite core. John, uh, these come in a lot of different form factors. Could you kind of go through and show us each one? Yeah, certainly. Um, like I say, they do come in various shapes, sizes, and forms. Um, this allows us super flexibility for applications, obviously. Um, and also it has to deal with, um, um, like this one for an example, is very versatile because we can have it with a, a quick connect on the end, such as you see here. But we also, this can be an open end where you, it's a terminal connection inside. So that can be an advantage for somebody as well. This head is also adjustable, so you can turn the sensing face in different directions. Versatility for applications. That's the big thing here. We've got really small packages. Here's our new um, uh, BI-8U Q08. Very small, discrete package. Um, and then we got different sizes. Once again, they're all going to be sensing um, for proximity. They're all going to have the same Uprox technology in them. But we can get into and we get into the different sizes. Your sensing ranges will increase um, to deal with your different target sizes. Can you give us an idea of the range here, from smallest to largest? Um, certainly. This one right here, for an example, we're talking about an eight millimeter range, and all the way up to here is 75. So we can have quite the breadth of, of targets. Now, kind of a rule of thumb too is the larger the sensing distance larger the target kind of situation as well. We also have what we have washdown sensors. Here's one of our latest and greatest uh, washdowns made for a washdown environment. Um, so if you've got an example like in the food and beverage industry, um, say a bakery or a canning application, something like this, this sensor is made to survive in a very wet environment. Not a submerged environment, but a very wet environment. Uh, the plastics and such are all made out of materials that are very resistant to cleaning agents, you know, soaps, different things like that. There's Ecolab tests that we've done. It's a very just, high, high IP rating. High IP, IP68, 69K. And we've also, there's a test that we did, so it's subjected to very high steam pressure, uh, like out of a jet, you know, a, a steam gun or whatever you want to call those things. Um, and these here? And, and once again, this one right here, for an example, is showing us a Uproc sensor that's got a Teflon coating. So this could be used for a more harsh environment where, say, there might have a weld slag or, or something like this where it prevents anything from sticking to it. Thanks very much, John, for showing us the Turk Uprox technologies. By all means, stop by if there's anything else we can talk about. So for the latest in sensing technologies, check back regularly to the Sensors Channel on Control Engineering's website, www.controleng.com. This has been Mark Hosky for Control Engineering, the Read Business Information Technology Video.